James, great to see you. Um, obviously here to discuss Royal Claim, the unbeaten filly. Can you just take me back to, to the beginning of the year, your, your hopes for her coming in with essentially blank canvas, but what did you think you were going to get out of her at the beginning of the year? Well, she was the filly we had most of our hopes on for being, you know, uh, a chance of achieving a, a top level result. But at the same time, we were very, very nervous because um, she'd picked up an injury the previous year. Mm -hmm. So we were treading our way carefully through the winter into the spring. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember Sheikh Jim used to call me every every you know, week or two. And sometimes he would ask, sometimes he wouldn't. Sometimes I'd volunteer and I'd, mm -hmm. I'd say, he'd say, how's it going? I'd say, well, put it this way. We've wrapped her in cotton wool all winter and every week we're just removing one layer, one, one layer at a time. So she must have shown you something before the, the injury that she had that, that gave you the, the mindset that you had something quite special in your hands. Yeah, we, we loved her at the breeze, we loved her when she won, but we had no idea what she, she had beaten at Newcastle at the time. And then after Newcastle, we worked her, I think, seven days before the Queen Mary at Royal Ascot, and she absolutely blew us away. We were shocked, we'd never quite seen anything like it. Unfortunately then, she was injured afterwards, so um, um, obviously we were a little bit down, but then as the season went on and Perfect Power went to, on to win a Group 1 and mm. Fearby behind her also went on to black type success. So I suppose we, we pretty much knew on the basis of the form of the Newcastle race and the piece of work she'd done when she got injured before Ascot that, you know, w what we had if everything went right. So coming into the beginning of this year and putting into a, into a race where she obviously had to, to prove herself after the injury, but also you could have gone higher, you could have gone stakes company. Why did you go the route that you went? Well actually the same day we had a, we had a, entered in a listed race at Sandown, mm -hmm. the Scurry, and just that little novice at Bath. Um, Bath, as it happens, of course at Camp Water, had had a load of rain in the few days preceding up to the race, so the ground was, you know, as nice as it ever can be at Bath really. Um, we really hadn't done that much with her, if I'm honest. We were using that as a gallop to get her ready. Um, so perhaps we could have got, got away with winning that listed at Sandown, but um, we, we just went one, one step at once. So then you, you take the step up then to your, the City Wall Stakes, where she went off joint favourite, I think it was, but she had a big opposition in, in Winter Power. What were your thoughts? Do you think you had something that was, she got through those first tests and now she was, she was at her prime? Yeah, I mean, we, we did nothing with her at all between Bath and York. It was, um, I think it was four, four weeks in between. So we, we did absolutely nothing with her, just a few canters and a bit of swimming. Mm. Um, but we, we, you know, we've, we've had a few fast sprinters here in, in the past, far above an invincible army under the stars. So we knew she was pretty special. It was really just a question of how she was going to take it all. I did have a nervous moment, actually, when I walked across from the stables to York and I hear the hub of the crowd I think there were 30,000 people that day and I thought, and it was red hot too, and I thought, what is she going to make of all this? What if she loses it in the prelims walking mm -hmm. across the track? Um, so I was, I was more nervous as to how she'd take it and would she be in one piece than was she going to win? I, I was reasonably confident if all went well that she would. So she, she wins a race that Winter Power won last year, the likes of Marsh, some very speedy fillies. You've also mentioned that you've had a lot of speedy horses in your care, but I've, I've seen a quote, read a quote, that you've said that she's the fastest you've trained. Yeah. Is yeah. that something you, you very much stick by? Yeah, I do. Um, actually, my head lad, Chris Carter, he has ridden Invincible Army and Far Above and Royal Acclaim, and he is convinced, as am I, that she is just the quickest. Um, yeah, she's very special. So we, we head to the Nunthorpe Stakes, Group 1, which would be for you a, a first Group 1 if, if you were to get there, a bigger challenge. And obviously you've, you've talked about the, the, the pressure that is just in the prelims of a City Ball Stakes. How do you prepare a horse like this for this biggest test of, of your career as well? Well, I would try and do everything as you'd normally do. I mean, we had a, a, a lovely winner at York a few years ago, Invincible Army won the Group 2 Duke of York. Um, and as you say, we got within a neck of Group 1 glory in France in the, in the French Guineas, but to, to get, uh, get the Group 1 at York would be something special. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just taking it one step at a time. She's a filly that does very little, but we, we have given her one piece of work and she looked extraordinary. Um, so really, we'll just, we'll just float from, from here, here into the Nunthorpe. She'll do a bit of swimming, a bit of cantering and not much else. And in terms of the challenges, the Nunthorpe's always, it's, it's brilliant because there's, there's a healthy competition. It's a proper race. There's a, always a good team of horses that line up, two-year-olds as well. Have you looked through the, 
the potential that you might be up against, especially the talks of these two-year-olds that might run as well and think, or do you just, you just run your horse as it is? I try my best not, not to look and not worry because it, it doesn't make a, a lot of difference. And I have huge confidence in my own filly. But you can't help but have a little look and think, well, if that didn't run, it might be easier. And yeah. that, if that ran, that, that, might, that might give us a lead. And what side of the track are we going to be? You can't help but start to, to um, um, put the race together in your mind. But the, the honest truth is we're, we're very confident in our own filly. And uh, if all goes well with her preparation, I'd like to think she has her favourites chance.